What is up and welcome to No Agenda where I have my internet friends come teach me stuff. Today I'm sitting down with Jason Ladaney. Did I get that right, Jason? You did, you did. Okay, good. Impressive. I know, I've been binging your content, so uh, <laughs> it's the least I could do. But anyways, Jason will be teaching us the secrets of card magic. Jason, thank you so much for being here, man. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm honored. I'm a huge magic nerd, so on a personal level, I am uh, excited about this one. <laughs> I do have to call something out, though, before we get started, which is obviously I have a ton of respect for you, and uh, I've watched a ton of your content, and I always try to have uh, an understanding and appreciation for the amount of practice that I have to imagine has gone into doing this. And I really sincerely want to believe that everything I see is 100% honest to what you talk about. Uh, that, that is said. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that said, I my my brain when I watch your content, and then it goes back to compute and validate against everything I've seen and experienced in my human life. It just doesn't <laughs> compute, <laughs> and so I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> I know, and that's what it's designed to do. They're literally designed to fool you. And and don't think I haven't figured out the things that you're going to try to think about. So so those have to be closed off. So a good way to think about it is a highway. Imagine a, a highway with a bunch of exits, and each exit is a plausible map. Well, maybe he did that, or maybe he did this, or maybe he did that. Yeah. And I've driven that road many times before you. Uh, so it's my job to close off all those exits. And uh, I, I do all of this stuff live. This is what I've been doing. So one thing I, I hear a lot is Instagram magician or internet magician. That's not what I am. I, I've been doing this for 20 years in front of people. And it was only because of the pandemic that I started putting this stuff up online. So it's it's normal for you to uh, think, oh, well, he must be using the camera frame or editing or so something of that. Uh, but that's not it's, the show is even crazier. That's the thing. The live show is even more like it, it's even far more insane things that I do there. Yeah, yeah. I hope to see one one day. So if you're not familiar with Jason's work, let me give a quick primer for anyone who hasn't seen you, hasn't seen your uh, stuff online or a live show or something like that. But uh, so Jason's a, an entertainer, a world-class magician. He's written two books about card magic. And then I guess more recently known and probably among a younger crowd known for basically just roasting his trolls <laughs> on TikTok uh, and doing all kinds of amazing card magic slash card cheat tricks. We'll get into a little bit of the distinction and all that. But um, for someone who hasn't seen any of your content, specifically on TikTok and short form, like, can you share a little bit about what you do on there? Uh, well, basically, I have dipped into the world of uh, card cheating um, to create things that are impossible to figure out. So... Um, the reason that the cheating technique is such a strong thing to pull from is because you have to do that stuff in live games uh, with people looking at you with high stakes. You know, there's there's a lot to risk when you do that. So these moves and these concepts have to be completely invisible. They, they can't be caught. Otherwise, they wouldn't work in a real game, you know. So that's a difference. Magic tricks, those are tricks, things that you buy in, online and they're gimmicks and things like that. I, I'm not using any of that. This is all sleight of hand that you just work on through practice. And also a lot lesser known because there's not books about, I mean, there are books out about this, but it's a tiny little fraction of people that wrote books uh, on this topic. And there's only a handful of people in the world, but quite literally, there's probably less than 10 people in the world, maybe 20 people in the world that can do the stuff that I, that I do or understand it and have devoted their life to it. And there's a mutual under, understanding amongst yourself that we don't share this stuff. This no, is, this isn't stuff for to go blow my YouTube channel up and say, hey, I'm going to teach you this concept. It's, it's not about that. I'm, I'm not here to be famous. I'm doing my my thing and I'm keeping those secrets to myself. And I've written books, but they're only they're they're available to magicians. But even in those books, I'm keeping some of those things to myself uh, that myself and my mentor, a Darwin Ortiz, have spent literally our lives working on these things to have to see how we can fool people and do this stuff. So uh, I am creating, I would call them tricks, you know, things that fool people, puzzles and things, but using those methods and people can't figure them out. And it's hilarious. And that's why <laughs> you get kind of pushed into that. Well, this can't be real. This can't be real. Yeah. And I know it's real. So therefore, that gives me the license to say, why don't you sit down? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you, why don't you sit down because the next video is a clip of me doing it live here it is on stage live and that, that's the funniest thing you can go anybody 
can go on the uh, YouTube and search uh, Ladani Magic Castle and watch my show in front of 50 people in a live theater or a live show doing the same things, doing the same things. So yeah. that's what I mean when you try to figure things out. You've got nothing. You've got nothing at all. And I enjoy that tremendously. You have a unique relationship with your trolls in the sense that, like, I spend a lot of time talking to people that make content on the Internet. And usually trolls are something you try to ignore with all mm. of your mental mm. power. You're trying not to look at those comments. Sometimes people just like, like comments can be useful, but sometimes I'm like, I don't even want to read any comments because it's not worth the hit it's going to take when I read the negative comments. Now you've kind of flipped that on its side and said, use these trolls. So these people that are saying, oh, Jason, this is fake, or you pho Photoshop that one thing of you editing, uh, or sorry, of you, of you pulling out the ace. It wasn't really the ace. Yeah. yeah, I bet you can't do it this way. Or yeah, exactly. That's my favorite. Bet you can't do it this way. And literally the next video is that, is to do it with one hand. So an hour after that comment, I post it with one hand. And, and it doesn't stop anything. It's just the next person says something else. But you've nailed, you've, you've figured it out. It's it's that I, I've, at first it was like in 2020 when I first put my videos up, it was overwhelming. I had a video that had 33, 36 million uh, views. Um, and it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm internet famous now, you know? And I would yeah, see yeah. the news and they'd say like, this viral video of this happening got over 2 million views. And I'd be on the couch going, you know, Two million. <laughs> what a joke! What was that video? A casino wash video. So uh, the people think a casino wash can't be beat when you scramble the cards all over the table, but that that's sure. something I've been doing since 2010. You know, so uh, I didn't think anything of it. It was just content for me. Let's put it out there. And if you watch those earlier videos, it's just me doing things. It's not that that uh, conflict that uh, that is created in in the uh, comments and everything where I'm responding to everybody. Uh, but it blew up. And then all of those, I, I would say 90% of those comments was the beginning of that. This can't be real. This is, you know, totally uh, bullshit. You can't do this. Nobody can do this. Nice Photoshop from your mom's basement kind of stuff. You know, and I was just like, totally. well, this is easy to beat because the things that they asked me to do were actually easier than the thing I was doing in a video. So that's when I kind of started responding to these things. But the essence of it really is that uh, you have to spin that negative into a positive. So if you end up in some situation where it's not working out for you, if it's, so what's, a, what's the best I can make of this situation? And the, the irony that the people that are trying to take the page down through delegitimate, you know, making everything fake are the people that are actually growing the channel. Yeah. Because now 90% of the comments are, oh my God, we love that you're destroying these people. Did you have to evolve into that? Did you, were you initially super frustrated by it oh, and no, no, then no, no. learned how no, to, or, or did this never? No, it really never bothered, bothered me because a decent analogy, if somebody came up to you and just said, you know, let's say because somebody came up to me and said, your name's Bill. And I'd say, well, no, it's Jason. And he goes, no, you're an idiot. It's Bill. I bet 200 bucks it's Bill. So I take my license out and say, it's Jason. So it was never like, it's just, you're an idiot. It's not that, oh, please, this hurts. Please take me seriously. It was, this is laughable. Yeah. So it never, and, and it's just the kind of person I am. You, you can't, you know, if you want a price of the lesson right here, you can't take the internet seriously. My God, these are people that, they, they, their moon landing is fake and this is fake. And it's a flat earth things. Right. So you can't take any seriously. So you can't let it. Get, That's a mature thing. Yeah. Yeah. You can't let it get to you to begin with. So it never was an issue where I'm sitting at home with my head in my hands going, what am I going to do? It's these people are, this is crazy. These people are serious. When people say things like do it with two stopwatches, I bet you can't do that. <laughs> you only see that one comment. But you don't realize that that person argued with me for like 15 minutes after the fact, you know, and they were serious. They were serious. So um, it's, 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 very entertaining for me to read these comments. And then the funny thing is, after you shoot the video, the next day, I've got literally 20 different options of which crazy thing do I want to respond to. And people are looking forward to that shut this guy down kind of thing. So it's it's an amazing experience uh, so far. But yeah, they're generating the content. You kind of hinted at this earlier, but um, I actually didn't know the term card cheat before I came to your page. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, is there a distinction in your head between like card magic and card cheat in terms of like, yeah, what absolutely. you're interested absolutely. in? Absolutely. Okay. Well, uh, what is the difference? Card magic is entertainment. You, you, I, I have a, I'm in a living room after a house party or something like that. And I sit down at a dining room table and entertain for, for 35, 40 minutes or whatever, or do a show or 
my personal shows, I, I'll go to uh, a venue. I, I did a cruise in Chicago recently. Uh, yeah. I go, somebody flies me in to go somewhere and there's either 100 people there or 500 people or whatever. And I entertain and talk about cheating at cards and talk about card magic. So I, my character allows me to kind of weave in between the two. You're now going to see something that's a card trick that's magic related. And then now you're going to see some gambling technique. But I, I can kind of maneuver through those things. But the distinction really is card magic is for entertainment purposes. I'm going to entertain you and blow your mind with something. And card cheating is here's how you deal off the bottom of the deck. Look, he can't see it. You know, I'm going to win this game. But I don't want anybody at that table knowing <laughs> what I'm doing, you know. So, right. uh, you know, yeah, exactly. One hides on behind the scenes and one's out front. But what's interesting is I'm using a lot of card cheating techniques to do what looks like card tricks. That makes sense. Do you ever venture out venture out into other fields of of magic? So like there's other types of magic. You pull a rabbit out of a hat or something like that. Or yeah, you... that never never did anything for me. There's something cool about the card cheat thing. If you notice, my character is very James Bondy and very elegant and smooth and it's it's adult entertainment I, i'm not here to pull coins out of people's ears so that, that never fit me i mean when i was seven years old i thought it was the greatest thing but quickly it wasn't very i mean i was probably nine or ten years old when i really fell in love with playing cards and it was maybe i was around 15 years old or so when i decided that that's all that's all i want to do because i can do a whole show with this that's all i need i don't need coins and and magic wands and you know livestock cages and doves I, I don't that's that's just too much work linking rings and all. and plus if you think about it a typical magician show this is nothing against magicians but a typical magic show is more of a variety thing i'm now going to link these rings now i'm going to cut this silk in half and restore it now here's three red balls that disappear and appear and now there's a lion in that cage you know that they're really nothing to do with one another except this fooled you and this fooled you and this fooled but if it's an entire card act about cheating at cards and gambling and things like that, the show's unified. Right. So imagine watching a movie where the, it's a completely new movie every 15 minutes. It, it, it's kind of like, wait a minute, now now we're in, this is a Vietnam movie and now all of a sudden it's a cartoon and now it's a romantic comedy. What's going on? So I, I like to stay the same person from beginning uh, to end. And that's where my skill set is. So. Uh, that's what I want to showcase. Yeah, you might as well maximize and double down. And you've obviously kind of like benefited from the compounding returns of just like focusing on on one singular it's, it's thing. It's unifying. Yeah, this is my profession. When you were seven or 15 or whatever it was when you decided like this is what I'm going to dedicate myself to, was it like I can imagine a, a, a bunch of different scenarios of how that aha moment could have happened. Um, for me, at least, it would be oh, I did it in front of a group of friends and it kind of blew their minds. And then I was like, oh, this is kind of a social hack that can get anyone to fuck with me, basically. Uh, yeah, well, it was actually uh, my older brother. Uh, so I have a brother that is 11 years older than me. So obviously if I'm seven and he's 18, he's pretty cool. <laughs> Dude's yeah. got a car. He's got I'm familiar. I've got, a, I've got two older siblings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was like, and also we were far enough apart 11 years. So we didn't have the right. We didn't have the problem. We didn't beat each other up. And we, he was the cool dude. I looked up to him all the time. So we never had any. Totally. Problems. Yeah. There was never any like, I'm going to do something on purpose to piss him off. So it was a very different relationship than your, than I hear other brothers and sisters and things talking about. So anyway, his room was just so cool. Like he had a like pool table. There was money in there, you know, like, oh, look at all that money. You no, know, it turns out today it was probably like 18 bucks in a jar. But to me, it was like the coolest thing. Yeah. And he had a deck of cards in there. And one day he showed me a trick and he, he had the, you probably, if, if, how old are you? 28. You may have seen this trick already. The four robbers, uh, the, the jacks that go into different parts of the deck. And then the jack stays on top as the lookout. Remember that old trick? And uh, the police come and then the, all the jacks end up yeah, on the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that trick. All right, so he showed me that. And my, and also at seven years old, you're just figuring out how the world works, you know? Like you, you're starting to- I mean, my, for context, my brother convinced me he had magic with like a pen and like the yeah, garage yeah. remote that he would like yeah, point that's and stuff, he would that's open stuff. the sure. thing and I was like I thought <laughs> yeah, that was magic, so. <laughs> no he, did, he he wasn't vicious like that but anyway he he made those jacks appear on top of the deck and I said that's not that's not possible and we lived in a library at the time I'll say that again a library we the library was downstairs and the whole uh, uh, upstairs of this library was an apartment and if you lived if you took care of the library you got to live up there for a cheaper rent so that's where my family lived 
and I had access to magic books. So I went down there and checked out these magic books. And funny story, I still have them today. They are 25 years, 30, 30 years overdue. I still have them. Wow. And uh, I learned of tricks out of those. And my whole goal was to fool my brother. I wanted to get him back. And that took a long time because every time I showed him a trick, he would then say, oh, well, you had extra cards there. Or I saw the cards up your sleeve or I saw this or saw that. And it took uh, it took about 15 years to fool him. <laughs> but one day in my 20s, <laughs> I showed him but a trick. But there must have been incrementally, you must have been getting rewards along the way. Otherwise, no, he shut me down in, well, in other ways. Yes, but not, not with my brother. He was the one I could. Not with your but brother. Fine. I, but like what? continued to motivate you to because because whatever i learned how to play the drums when i was 12 and i dropped it when i was 15 because i was like mm -hmm. ah, i don't know this doesn't fulfill me enough to continue to practice like was it just the love of the game or like was it was it adding value somehow in your adolescence or making you cool at school or doing something no definitely not that um in school, I, I played You're piano. Like, definitely wasn't cool in school. <laughs> yeah, piano. Well, they're, 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 those kids are they're the that's the TikTok version of you know back then because you would do something and they would just rip the cards out of your hands, you know. Yeah. So um, I I was I'm also a piano and a guitar player too. So even in my I had all three things cooking at once. So I, I was always busy doing something. But honestly, this is gonna sound crazy, but my real goal was not just to learn for me, not to go out and perform so much. But it was to learn for me to get better so that I could fool my brother someday. Wow. I, I know that sounds nuts, but that's really what it was. Because at that age, I'm not gigging and t doing shows and things like that. And I wasn't a big, like, social, like, go out and be like, hey, everybody, I'm the star of the show, you know. Which is ironic because today's character, the person I play today on stage is, like, it's all about me, folks, you know. For sure. But uh, eventually, I did fool him, and it was very rewarding. I finished the trick, and he just didn't say a word. It was really awkward. And then I finally just did one of them double fist pumps, and I'm like, yes. Yeah. And then it was after that that I um, I started performing. Well, I was on the road. I used to tour with uh, Shamika Copeland. I toured with her for five and a half years. And I toured with Vince Converse before that. I was a professional magician on the road. So I would keep myself busy uh, reading these tricks and reading books and entertaining uh, the bandmates, of course. And then when we'd meet another band or B.B. King's band, the horn guys, I mean, I would show them tricks and everything. So I did use it in that way because... You know, there's this politics when you're on the road that the opening act, Jeff Beck or or uh, uh, BB King and all, you're not the the opening band isn't supposed to ming. You know, there's separate dressing rooms and everything, but the the card tricks allowed me to buddy up to those guys and get a lot closer to them than I that I think I was allowed to get because I was the cool kid that knew how to deal spades. You know, so uh, I think I used it in that way, um, but it wasn't really for performing. It was just to, to build those relationships. Pre TikTok, where you can kind of go viral overnight, how did you build notoriety back then? Like, how were you able to get access? Did you just like, did you eventually hire an agent to put your I never, with, no, you I know, never did. I, I didn't want my stuff online because magicians, I hate to say it's really sad to say, but magicians, not all of them, but really a lot of them are these parasites that will just rip your material off. So once you put something on YouTube, it just, it's on the internet and all of a sudden it's just gone. Somebody else takes it and runs with it and, the, the, it's, it's very difficult to yeah, you'll say oh i posted it on youtube in 1990 or 2007 or something like that and then they'll, they'll say oh well i've been doing this since 1997 you know it's, so it's it's i just figured if i don't put my stuff out there then i don't need to worry about it getting ripped off so quietly on my own i was just doing private events word of mouth believe it or not i would do some shows in the city and hand out business cards and get called back to two shows and I didn't hire an agent until 2018. Wow. Um, so now I have a manager and an agent that takes care of all, yeah, all the bookings and stuff. But back then... The original algorithm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's old school, but it, but it worked. I would do shows and hand out cards and people would call me back. It was as simple as that. Well, um, I wanted to ask you about the card sheets actually exist. So you already said that there's probably less than whatever, 10, 20 people that can do it at the level that you do it. But I saw that you responded... Someone had commented on your video that said, do you think that dealers and house games often cheat in Texas Hold'em? House games meaning not at a casino, but like in someone's basement or like whatever, maybe they rented out a, a private space or something. You replied in private high stakes games with a hired dealer, yes. So yeah, I guess this was a little surprising to me. Like there are actual card cheats that are dealing at, regular games that might oh have my god been yeah fixed. yeah that's all your mind i teach students i have about 150 200 students right now and i teach professor some of them are professional dealers 
Um, and that's up to them. I teach, I provide my services. They want to know what things are. And I've written two books on this stuff and they want help with certain things. So I help them with that. What they do with it is their business. But the real one that's going to get you is the consulting. Uh, I've been called to take a look at footage, uh, talk about certain games, what's happening in certain games. There was one, I don't want to drop any locations or names or anything like that. But a couple of months ago, I was hired because there was a private game in a major city where the top winner over the course of a year was like $4.5 million in a year playing poker. The number two winner was $3.8 million. And the number, uh, excuse me, the number two winner was $3.8 million. The number three winner was about $3 million. And the number four winner was about $300,000. And they came to me and said, how come our top three people in this game over the course of a year are making millions of dollars? And the number four position is making $300,000. And I said, well, you have a cheater in your game. Uh, <laughs> really? There's Is that obvious? Way. Well, I can't flip a coin and have it land on heads 80% of the time. There's something wrong with that coin. So in poker, uh, you're going to have the same thing. So the ultimate giveaway is when you have someone that's winning far, far too much. No one's lucky all the time. So that'll tip off the thing. And I worked with him and we figured out what the problem was. And it was resolved within a month or two. Yeah. Um, by changing decks, something as simple as that, by change, introducing new decks into the game every hour, they were able to solve the problem and figure out what the problem was. And um, so that's usually the tip off. But I, I know, and also the people that I work with that are in my circle, uh, they have experience with consulting as well. And we all know about court cases and things that go. So in those private games, there's no secure. The security is nothing. There's nothing there. There's right. No of course not. So it's very easy to take advantage of, of games with all sorts of crazy methods uh, that you wouldn't even believe if I told you. And people are pretty unassuming too. Hey, you know, this guy that I know invited me to play poker. It's high stakes. You don't know uh, what you really don't know. looking for this stuff. Exactly. Yeah, you yeah. don't know what you don't know. Your 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 vision of what's possible is here. And the world of card cheating is is endless, you know. So the, the things are happening outside of your knowledge and you feel everything's fine. But boy, you are getting taken. You are getting taken down. Yeah. So uh, that you'll find it there. And then in the friendly home games, you know, the Thursday night deal at the kitchen table kind of games. There's not at the level of these million dollar games, but there is still some basic cheating going on in those games just because somebody wants an edge. Uh, it's, it's very normal. If the money's involved, someone's there to exploit it. Sketch. Uh, that's just how it works. And believe it or not, your high end casinos on the strip, that's where it's the cleanest. They it does happen there, but it's really rare, really rare. Right, because they put them through the ringer before they get hired. Yes, there's so much. Yeah, you don't I'm going to risk 10 years to life. I'm going to risk a felony to switch in aces. You know, and people do and they go to jail for a long time. So uh, but that doesn't happen in 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 uh, home games and private games. It's a way to shut people to let people know that this is real. You're seeing me do this and I will teach you how to do this. I think there's something special about card magic in just thinking about how it compares to other forms of entertainment. Like if you're a singer and you kind of fuck up your performance Honestly, most of the people in the audience might not even know or, oh, she had an off day and your video goes viral or something like that. If you're a comedian and you bomb, it's almost expected. There's also a lot of like understanding from the audience. And honestly, sometimes you can kind of come back from it if you are self-deprecating in that way. If you're a magician and you fuck up, you've kind of put your show in a place where like every future trick that you do, even if you get it right, is now like, oh, well, did he really get it right? Or, you know, is he just acting yeah, exactly. right because he fucked up the last one? And so exactly. it requires a level of accuracy and precision that I'm just like, so So do you find that like you're not even able to sort of like do anything until you get to that level of, of perfection with that trick? That's a great point. Yeah, I was going to say that the, the performance of live shows have, the, that's the reason people are leaning in more is because you're risking more. And also I put money on the line right on my shows. I, I bet money. I put the money on the table and we do these things. So people understand that I got one shot at it. There's 10,000 bucks on the line. If I don't get this, that money's yours today. And that's weird for wow. the last 20 years. It's always <laughs> worked, but you are absolutely right because it is paralyzing to create one of these new things and practice it for years and years and years and years and years in the background until you're ready to, to do it. And there's a, I have a method for that where I'll show friends and family first, 
Because if I lose a ten thousand dollar with my a bet with my brother, what are you going to do? Sue me? You know, right? So, yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, then it graduates from friends and family to students. I will show my students early material to make sure I can flush out the issues, and I have plenty of students to share that with. And if I screw something up with a student, it's the same thing. I don't have to worry about backlash and you know things like that. But that is all the refining period, so that by the time it comes out on stage. It's been done for years already, so there really isn't risk. I certainly act like there's risk, but there is no risk. I wouldn't be doing it if there was risk. I'm not going to go on stage and risk $10,000. How horrible would that look? But Jason, when you're cutting off 20 cards at rent, you don't have an off day. Maybe you didn't sleep well or you got in a fight. Oh, you probably, so are you going to mess up single-edged edition? Let's say you don't add 2 plus 7 for the next 20 years. Do you think you're going to be able to figure it out in 20 years? Look, I uh, <laughs> I know how to drive. I've driven hundreds of miles in my life. I might... You know, yes, and accidents are your fault. Car by accident. <laughs> accidents are other people's fault. Remember that. Yeah. Single digit edition. Okay. So that's what you'd compare it to. So basically you're getting into that point where it's literally just fluent. And I imagine it varies from trick to trick, but to get to the point where it's, it's in a place to be performed with $10,000 on the line in front of a live audience. What well, are we talking easily, about? Easily, easily. Everything I've ever created has gone through two, three, four years before it's even hit, hit the stage. A period. Gotcha. And then it's been on stage for 10 years. There's tricks that I created in 2010 that I'm still doing. So it, and think of the thousands of performances that, so anything that could possibly go wrong, you've already have a defense for you built up things. You, I, I've had shows where people that not necessarily that they won, but they've said witty things to me where I was dealing the cards. I said, listen to this. This is an example of how I would correct something. And it was another one where I was betting money. Yeah. And I have lost money, as a matter of fact, in shows temporarily, but we'll get back to that in a second. So uh, I was dealing cards into a pile and I said, if the uh, next card on the table is uh, your card, I win the money or whatever. And I was right, of course, when I dealt the card, it was the correct card. And the guy said, well, technically it didn't hit the table. You dealt it on top of the pile. So it hit the other cards, but it never hit the, the table. And I was Which like, wasn't part of the trick. Uh, yeah, exactly. But he was technically right, though, because I said the word table. I said table. And if there's 20 cards on a table and I put the card on top of the cards, it's not really on the table, even though the cards are on the table. So I put the card on the table and said there, but he goes, ah, technically it's not right. So guess what I do for the rest of my life? I now deal the cards one by one onto the table. You know, or I say into the pile. So I, I, I'll fix little things like that to make sure that the wording is correct. And the funny thing is there were some shows I did. There was one show I did a long, long time ago where I did lose them. I made the bet and I the wrong card came up. So I said, OK, temporarily you have won $100. Now you double or nothing. Yeah, let's play three card Monty and see if you can double your money. So we played three card <laughs> Monty where she lost the 100 bucks. So. It's you're never going to win anything. You did the I've got so many ways to bend around that it, it's you're uncatchable. All right. I could keep asking you a million questions, but I want to spend the rest of the time, Jason, going through. So so I thought about uh, different ways to split up this lesson. And I think it'd be great to get some sort of like if I was an intro level student coming in for a class to your point about meeting me where I am. Imagine I, I just haven't really done any magic. And so I, I know there are some tactical things that I've seen on your page and you even do some tutorials about one-handed cuts, bottom dealing, which is when you deal from the bottom of the card or palming a card or like maybe there's some basic 101 skills you could teach. And then, uh, I mean, I can't let you go without letting you show us some cool stuff selfishly. So I will ask you to do some of that if you're cool with that. Well, I will be happy. The one thing you left off was card tricks. Uh, so we can do, um, I think... Uh, obviously, one-handed cut and all that is fine. That that's actually a little bit more of a complicated thing. Even the bottom deal is something that you you can really work for years to master bottom deal. So I wouldn't even start a student uh, with those things. Or palming is very complicated as well. Okay. So I'd be more than happy to. I mean, I can demonstrate them. Uh, for no, you yeah, much, but, whatever you uh, think makes most sense. And I think that sharing a card trick. Uh, so to answer your question, if I had a brand new student, I would never start him with a bottom deal. Um, okay. But I would start them with some simple tricks uh, that will fool you, uh, and then I'll show you how they work. So do you want to jump into one of those? Let's do it. And and I'm going to make a special call out. So usually these are sort of like audio and video friendly. For this one, I'm going to ask 
that if you're just listening, definitely pull up a screen uh, and you're going to want to see some of this stuff live as Jason goes through. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. All right. Um, do you play blackjack at all? Uh, I don't in casinos, but I know, you know, I've played with friends. Oh, you know what a good blackjack hand is, right? I'll give you a demonstration of how to gain sure. an edge in, in blackjack. Uh, it's a method known as cheating. Uh, so let's talk okay. about it. We'll use, uh, to make this easy to follow, uh, we use, uh, for example, a red blackjack, all right? Now, yep. have you heard of the term tracking playing cards before? Tracking, uh, yeah, like tracking counting cards kind of thing? Yeah, tracking means I can just keep track of the cards while they're shuffled, all right? So I'll give you a demonstration of how that's possible. And uh, what we're going to do is lose this blackjack into the deck wherever you want. So as I run down the cards like this, just say stop whenever you want. Stop. Okay, right about there. Stop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then how about this one? We'll go a little bit further, the other part of the blackjack, wherever you want. Stop. Right there. So that's where you want. That's where they start, Okay. So this blackjack starts at this position. We'll lose it back into the deck where you determined. Now, it's my job to keep track of where those cards are during the shuffles. It's pretty simple, actually. If you can do some basic math, you can do it. So after this shuffle, of course, well, now they're 21 and 38. Uh, but after this shuffle, 16 and 35, if I did my math correct, of course, I can always give the cards a cut. 27, 35, let's see, 18 and, 18 and 12. Sorry, I had to carry the one. Now, of course, you can also sh <laughs> shuffle the cards like this. Uh, you can also shuffle the cards. Uh, this is an in-the-hand shuffle the card. You can also shuffle the cards using an overhand shuffle like this. And, of course, it doesn't really change the math, really. Now it's at 12 and uh, 41. Of course, if I shuffle a second time, I just have to recalibrate the new positions of the cards. Uh, so this would be 13 and 31. Now, of course, after the cards are shuffled, you always have to give them a cut. And you can cut the cards as many times as you want, but it's not going to change anything. Uh, because you can just keep track of the new cards. Um, let's see. Uh, once you know how to track cards, you can also control cards. You can also control cards, meaning that I can bring them to known positions. Uh, and for this session, I think it would be pretty easy if we just brought it right back to the top of the deck. Jesus. It's basic math. It's basic math. This is basic stuff. Man. It's just right, stuff. yeah. No, this is like, I think maybe third grade or fourth grade level. Yeah, yeah. I learned this when I was about five. All right, here we go. <laughs> This is a basic uh, tracking trick. So this is what we call a pseudo demonstration. I'm not really tracking these cards. I can. I've demonstrated tracking uh, plenty of times. Uh, we can even do it in this uh, in this interview later. But what this is pseudo tracking. So I'm pretending to keep track of these cards and control yeah. them. Yet you were fooled because how the hell did I keep track of these cards through all that shuffling? So this is probably the oldest trick in the book. The cards that I actually lost were the pseudo mates of these cards. Uh, which, of course, would be the Ace of Hearts and the Jack of Diamonds. So oh, it wasn't is... even the same fucking cards? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. But I used a lot of mental uh, tricks there to, to throw you off, and I'll explain that as we go. So to do this trick, it's very simple. This starts on top of the deck, and these cards start in the middle of the deck somewhere. And I would say to you, would you like to, be, would I, would you like to learn about uh, shuffle tracking? It's very interesting. So let's use uh, two cards. Uh, we'll use a blackjack. And you remove these two cards, but I place them face down. Now, I don't want to give any extra attention to these cards, so they go down on the table face down. But have you ever been in a business meeting where you meet like 12 new people and they all introduce their names, and 30 seconds later you don't know anybody's name? You know what I'm talking about. Story of my life. Yes. Your brain realizes this is too much information for me, so it just, it just dissolves instantly. And that's what I'm yeah. taking advantage of here. Why would your brain work harder? It's not. So the moment that I say, let's use a red blackjack, you don't care anymore that it was the jack of hearts and the ace of diamonds. You just tune out and say, oh yeah, red blackjack, that's easier. So I'm taking advantage of how your brain works. And also yeah. I don't want to give extra time to it because that's the second part of it. Why give them, why make it easier for them? So I say, let's use a red blackjack and I throw it on the table like this. Now, everything else is a red herring, really. I mean, watch this. I spread these cards out. Remember, the pseudo mates are already up here. And I say, now, where exactly do you want this one to go? Say stop. Of course, it doesn't make a difference when they say stop. <laughs> that looks like about 14 cards from the top. And then we do this one, and I spread down, and I say, let's use the other card of the blackjack. And this goes down maybe another 13 cards. Now, this little touch, this card, the lower card, goes in a little further. See how this is sticking out? Yeah. This is in a little bit further, which means when I close this up, I can show you one more look at it. And guess what you see? 
both cards for just a second. But the trick's done already. It's already on top. So now when nice. I shuffle the cards, I make all this up. I say, well, now it's 21 and 38. Okay. <laughs> and now it's a 14 and a uh, oh, 14 and 32. That's right. Now, are you thinking, nah, he's probably going to switch those for pseudo mates. Or are you thinking, there's no way he knows this. <laughs> Clearly, I'm manipulating your thought. I am controlling your thoughts. By acting so confident and sit, uh, yelling out these numbers, I'm right. controlling what you're thinking about. So anyway, uh, these get all mixed up. And now you can just see that those are staying on top. And then, of course, when I shuffle cards like this, it doesn't make a difference. They're just staying on top. Watch this one. When I shuffle this way, all I'm going to do is take two cards. See those two? Mm -hmm. And I continue to shuffle. So where are they now? They're right on the bottom of the deck. And then when I shuffle again, guess what falls last? Two cards. They just went to the bottom and then they went to the top. Right? Yeah. So that's just a real basic control. And then when I cut the cards a million times, they're right here. So I know that they're still in my right hand. And see how this is right here in front of me? Well, when yeah. I pick them all up, I only have to keep track of that one pile. And when I say I'm going to control them how much time has happened between when i first showed you that black jacket now the lot 45 like seconds a minute, minute. <laughs> yeah minute and a half. you're really going to yeah. go back and remember that no you're not so you see red black jacket and you say how the hell did he keep track of those cards and cut to them and control them effortlessly well you were looking at the wrong cards so that's it i mean you don't have to be you don't have to be a world-class card cheat. You can do that trick right now. So you said right. earlier about a student that sits down and goes, well, listen, I paid you the money, but there's no way I can do any of this. I, 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 don't, I only get one lesson out of them that way. So right. uh, yeah, we, we, this is stuff that I would teach a student on a, on a very first session. Okay, so it's a 101 level card trick that, but still requires like that shuffling thing where you keep them on the bottom then you put them back on the top you know, that's months of practice every day. At oh, no, 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 no. That, that's actually a pretty simple shuffle. So in a first lesson, I teach some basic controls um, that are, are well within reach. Uh, now, the controls can get more advanced as we go, and they do, of course. But within one lesson, right. that that simple, that shuffle that we uh, just tried there, uh, you would be able to learn that in minutes. If I was a student and I said, okay, but Jason, what happens if someone calls me out? I got the the randomly super attentive person that actually remembered it was diamonds and hearts and not hearts and diamonds. That is the dues you have to pay. That's the experience. So no, no student uh, starts out with the character and the cockiness and the confidence that I have where you just shut everybody down. <laughs> that, that, does, that comes from experience. That, that comes from uh, several performances and, and understanding how to, let's go, yeah. crowd control. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, you know, it, this I use this analogy with my students. So they, they come to me and say, you know, I'm only I'm only four foot eight <laughs> and I went to the bar and I went to the tallest guy and I I slapped him in the face and said, you're an idiot. And then he beat the shit out of me. Can you help me with this? <laughs> right. And so my answer is and they're asking like how to fight and win. And it's like, no, 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 no. You win. <laughs> you're not the right person to go. Start with that. That's your the, that that the problem was the initial interaction. So sometimes a student doesn't know that, and they bring in material that's not ready for. They're not ready to perform that for their audience. So if you do the things that I had just mentioned, where you perform it the right way, where you're not showing the uh, cards immediately, where you're really emphasizing where they start in the deck, and then really emphasizing the new positions of the cards. You see what I mean? If you're really emphasizing yeah. those things, you're going to fool anybody. But a beginner may not realize how important that stuff was. If they leave the cards face up or find them in right after, they put them in and then find them immediately after, well, then you're giving the audience a better chance to figure out how it works. Impressive. Okay, I like that. That was a you know, attainable trick that was still very impressive, but uh, you know, obviously something that's really cool. Absolutely. Let's, you want to do another one that's uh, another simple trick like that? Yeah, let's see if you've, if you've got more off the dome. All right, so let's talk about another really basic uh, card trick, a beginner card trick. You had mentioned tricks that anybody can do right away. Uh, so let's talk about this one. Uh, have you heard the line, pick a card before? Yep. That's what we're going to do, a real basic pick a card trick, okay? So uh, before we start, uh, we'll give the cards a couple shuffles, a couple cuts, and watch this. Uh, I'll, since you're not here, obviously you can't pick a card, but I'll, I'll run my finger like this. You just say stop whenever you want. 
Stop. Right here. Uh, are you okay with this one, or you want one more, one less? It's up to you. Let's keep the one. Okay. Uh, so the Seven of Diamonds, that's your card. Now, in a live performance, obviously, I wouldn't know what that card is. Uh, but the Seven of Diamonds, that's the card. So the spectator would pick that card. And then we'll cut it back into the deck. And again, if you were here, you could give the cards cut. But you're not here. So you can tell me where do you want to cut. You know, the top, middle, or bottom. You're like uh, top. So closer to the top. See how that's only a small closer to chunk. the top. Yeah, like a small yeah, right. chunk. To See how that's, yeah, it's just just to show you that I, I'm giving you the control that since you're not here, you can cut where you totally. want. Totally. As a matter of fact, you might not trust me. So do you want to cut these cards again? Let's do one more and around the half. Yeah, just a blatant proof that you don't trust me one bit. <laughs> now, where, <laughs> where would you like me to cut closer to the top, middle, or bottom? Let's do around the half. Right around half, so you can see that's exactly uh, halfway down. And it was. We'll yeah. do the math later. I'll put, remind me to do that before we leave. Uh, we'll okay. do some uh, for you guys. Almost for you. Now, again, if we were in a big group of people, we would just have multiple people uh, do that. I would say, in case you don't trust me, you might not trust this guy. So why don't you cut the cards? And what ends up happening is we just give these cards a cut because I demonstrated tracking a moment ago. So you might think that I could keep track of those cards. But when we cut the cards like this, there's no way anybody could keep track of these cards when they're cut this many times. And you may think that I'm faking these cuts in some way. Look, top card changes. We know it's real. As a matter of fact, I'll give the cards a cut when they're face up. How many times? Do you want me to cut the cards again or just finish here? I mean, I think none of this really matters. But No, it yeah. really does. It really does because every time we cut, there's a new card. So it's up to you now. Do you want me to cut again? I'm satisfied with the amount of cuts. Okay. Cut. Remember, if you wanted me to cut again, it would have been a completely different card. If totally. I cut in a whole different place, it would have been a 10 or it could have been a queen. It could have been an ace. But you said stop here. Okay? Yeah. Now, how, we cut the cards 15 times, 20 times, 30 times even. And we ended up at a three. All right? Now, do you remember your card? Seven of diamonds? Yeah, watch this. So that's one. That's two. That's three. <laughs> and Dude. this is the easy stuff. <laughs> This is, this is the easy stuff. There's just nothing to it. All right. So let's talk about how to do this trick. At the very beginning, we had a real simple setup at the face of the deck. And this is it. And believe it or not, I, while we were talking... What the fuck? When did you do that? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It took a second to do it, right? So here we go. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is the setup, and that goes at the face of the deck. So this is the face of the deck. This is the top of the deck, okay? Now, yeah. when I shuffle the cards, here's a real basic control that you uh, would learn on a first lesson. It looks like I'm shuffling these cards, and I really am. But guess what? The ace through ten isn't going anywhere, right? It's not magic. All I'm doing is dropping those cards first when I shuffle. But from the top, it's very difficult to see that. It just looks like yeah. the cards are uh, yeah, so you, yeah, yeah. that's how you're fooled. You know that the trick, we're starting off with a truly shuffled deck of cards, but that is not the case at all. You can see that 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, aces at the top. So now wow. here's how the trick works. I spread the cards out on the table like this, and I say, in a mm -hmm. moment, I'm going to have you say stop. Now, you may not suspect that you were manipulated there, but you already were. Yeah, because, because you didn't allow I me to do the beginning. <laughs> Because I didn't say, say stop whenever you want and come down here. Because what if you said stop here? Yeah. You're so fine. do you see how subtle these manipulations are? And I'm controlling yeah. every aspect. So when you say, well, what if you screw up? I'm not going to screw up because I've thought about this already and make sure that I say, now listen to the timing. Listen to how brilliant this is. So I'll go like this. And when you want, just say stop. You know, you, it's gone. <laughs> so you don't have to. That's right. I'm not going to interrupt you. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So these are all just psychological methods. Uh, so also a great analogy for what I do mentally is very similar to con artists and things like that. Um, yeah. Scam artists, because they will convince you to give away all your money. And I'm doing a lot of the same things, but I'm not going to. Well, I'm going to take some of your money, but not all of it. But right. <laughs> I'm using that same mentality to fool you with basic card tricks. So anyway, that's a free selection. And the trick is so simple. It's so, so simple. This card here goes on top of the deck. And if you were here, you really would cut the cards. And this is a trick you would do like at a pool table with a bunch of friends, right? You got 15 people out at a dinner table. And you would say, go right down the dinner table and say, all right, Mary, you cut the cards. All right. Okay. Frank, you cut the cards. Bill, you cut the cards. 
And this is all real. And you're fooled by this because these are real, genuine cuts. And there is no manipulation here. You can even Wait, show Wait, Jason, the isn't the 1 through 10 getting fucked up when you do that? No, no, no. You'll see in a second. When I cut the cards, ace through 10 is still in sequence. It's just in a different place. So ace through 10 is now up here, then it's down here, then it's over here, then it's up here. But it'll never change. So let me cut right into the middle of it. Even though I've cut into the middle of it, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 to ace. You see how it's it's getting split, but it's not getting messed up. It's not getting shuffled. Oh, yeah. Hello. Oh, the cards are cut. And then now watch this manipulation. I say, look, you can clearly see the cards are being cut. There's a four on top of the deck. And when I cut, now it's uh, a nine. So clearly it's, you know, as a matter of fact, why don't we do it with the cards face up? So this feels like I'm helping you by understanding <laughs> I'll do it with the cards face up. But actually, and when, when I'm trying to help you, it's actually hurting you. So because now, now I can see the cards. So this <laughs> is apparently prove that the cuts are real. And now what's going to happen when multiple people cut, what's eventually going to happen? You're going to get a heart. You're going to get a heart. And this is when you stop. Now, do you remember when I said, do you want to keep going? And I, I said, so, we yeah. can stop here. Or we can he's stop. Now. <laughs> it doesn't matter because if you wanted to keep going, I just would have cut until I hit a heart again. So you've never seen the trick before, so you don't know how it goes. So yeah. when I say... You uh, stopped me at the six, but you could have stopped me someplace else. And I'll lift up and prove a different value. If you had said a different, uh, if you wanted me to cut, we would have got a queen. And perhaps we would have got a different queen or an eight or a three. All these different numbers. But this is where you wanted to stop. So doesn't that feel like that's your choice? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> it does. We take that six out like this. And I say, watch this. Now, the cut never screwed anything up. So guess what happens when I count down six cards? One, two, three four, five in our original card, seven of spades, it will always be at the sixth position. So it will be that way. If you cut to the five of hearts, it'll be at the fifth position. If you cut to the ace, it'll be the top card. If you cut to the 10, it'll be the 10th card. It, it's just a basic master. So uh, that's an example of what we call self-working card tricks. Now, the little shuffle that I added in the beginning where I retain the cards at the bottom, Yeah, that's me adding a little sleight of hands, but it's simple sleight of hand to start out with a, a shuffle deck of cards. But easily, I mean, these are two things, the tracking trick. Right, right, right. I, I you, you do couldn't right. do that, but I could see how I could get to doing that pretty quickly. Like it's, you know, you're you're just sort of, I've got a deck of cards here. I was hoping to follow along, but that's uh, <laughs> definitely not going to happen. Um, okay, cool. So these are both, I wouldn't say basic tricks, but I, I appreciate you kind of showing us what an entry-level trick would look like that is still super impressive as a party trick. Um, we could go through a bunch of those or why don't we do a couple of the more complex things that you don't have to explain, but at least just to show us yeah, absolutely. Uh, show you... closer to what's featured on your page also. Yeah. To show you what I do live. So let's, uh, let's do it. Now I'm sensing that when I do these things that you don't really trust how I'm shuffling these cards. When I mix the cards like this, I can sense just the way you're looking at the screen. I can see you, you know, this isn't TV. I can see back. You can see that these cards are getting mixed, but you don't believe that they genuinely are. We can get the cards a cut like this. You can see that that's fair, but I'm still sensing some distrust. So I will shuffle the cards flat on the table like this, and I'll even give them a cut, but I can still sense you don't believe I'm really mixing these cards. So we'll try something a little bit different uh, today. I'll have uh, about half the deck face up, about half the deck face down, and I will shuffle the faces into the backs like this. So now we'll have proof in a moment. Uh, that you can see the cards are shuffled. As a matter of fact, I'll even do it again, and this time I'll come up to the camera to show you. I've lost count of how many times I've shuffled these cards, but hopefully the camera won't go out of focus. Can you see up close that that is a fair shuffle? Yes? yes. And the proof really is that once we have faces mixed into backs throughout, now we know these cards are shuffled. Now that we know the deck is mixed, would you be impressed if I could say, for example, cut to an ace? Would you be impressed? Yes. All right, so to cut halfway down, just find an ace. I mean, clearly you'd be impressed. <laughs> now let's try this again. Uh, would you be impressed if I could cut to a second ace? You know, each time it gets a little bit harder. Do you want a second ace? Yes. Let's try it. If I cut about halfway down, there should be an ace about there. Now, I know what you're thinking. He's saying, okay, well, this is great and all, but he really didn't shuffle these cards. Uh, so I'll do this again. Uh, I'll give the cards. I've lost count of how many times these cards have been shuffled. But faces into backs from the top to the bottom. And it's got to be about eight or nine times at this point where I've shuffled faces into backs. You can see from the top to the bottom. 
Now, for the third ace, do you want me to find it the easy way or the hard way? The hard way. It's a trick question. There is no easy way. But I will do this. I will give the cards a cut like this to find a third ace. You know, every time it does get a little bit more difficult. So at this point, I've cut to the ace of uh, diamonds, the ace of uh, clubs, the ace of spades. If I cut near the top of the deck, I can find a face down or a face up card. If I cut near the middle of the deck, I can find a face up or face down card. So rather than try to cut to that last ace, the ace of hearts, I think it's easier to riffle once like this and turn all of the cards face down. Except for that last Jesus. ace, the ace of hearts. Did you say Jesus is Jason? Just call me Jason. It's, it's just, <laughs> we're just friends here. We're just having a good time. All right. Wow. That was impressive. No, just, just some basics. I don't have much to say. That is, uh, <laughs> that is insane. And I've seen all this shit on your page and I'm still like, just seeing it live is, is, uh, oh my God. It's man. pretty amazing, isn't it? It's pretty amazing. Now, I had mentioned earlier about shuffle tracking. So can we talk? You want to see some, some shuffle tracking? Yes, let's do it. All right, let's do that. Uh, so as we had mentioned earlier, um, shuffle tracking, I showed you a trick that was pseudo tracking. But a lot of people ask, what does real shuffle tracking uh, look like? So for this, um, what I want you to do is think about it. Name any card in a moment. Name any card that you want in the deck. But don't think of ace of spades, super, super common. Uh, women think of the queen of hearts or the queen of diamonds. Guys are ace of spades and uh, king of spades. If you want to just think of a number and then a suit. But the whole point is afterwards, I don't want you to say, oh, everybody says that card. So what would you like? A gender non-assuming card. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What, what <laughs> it's something that you won't say at all, oh, everyone. What, what, yeah. what would you like? I'll go four of uh, clovers. Four of clubs? All right, watch this. We're on this camera, right? Now, shuffle tracking gives me the ability to find any card that I want in the deck. You set the four of clubs, so we'll give the cards a shuffle like this, we'll give the cards a cut like this, and I'll just cut to the four of clubs. So it's very, very simple. Now, you might think that this, that this was, this was a uh, deck of four of clubs or something like there's more than one four of clubs, but no. Now, I've done this on my TikTok before, and people think it's fake, so what are they going to say now? I mean, what are they going to say? So anyway, let me give you an example of shuffle tracking. Do you need a moment to recover from that? A little bit, yeah. A little bit, yeah, of course. When I said world class, I meant it. Now, some people, like I said, think that it's all four of clubs. You can see that's not the case. If this were a live show, I'd have you sign that. But uh, it's not a live show, so you'll just have to take my word uh, that it's the same card in a moment. Now, let's give the cards a couple mixes because, believe it or not, you can shuffle cards... Um, and keep track of them while other, or you can keep track of cards while you shuffle, but you can also keep track while other people shuffle as well. Uh, so I'd like to demonstrate when I shuffle the cards, how I can simply keep track of that card. And if you can do basic math, you can follow along. So the four of clubs starts where? At the top. It's right on top. One. It's right there. See how easy this is? Now, when yeah. I give the cards a couple cuts, I have to keep track of it. And of course, when I cut like this, it's 32, it's 17, it's, it's 21 now. So you, you know that it's 21, correct? Yeah. Good. Okay. Now, uh, i got to be honest, a couple cuts isn't that difficult. When I start shuffling like this, then it does get much more difficult. So you can see that that's a fair and honest mix. Listen to this. Okay, clearly now it's 41. So after the cuts, it's 41. So it started on top, it's 41. You're all following along, right? Yeah. Uh, now, when I shuffle again, it's a little bit more difficult because two shuffles and a cut, that is difficult. After this, it's 20 cards up in the top. Oh, you don't believe me. Oh, my, my fault. I, hear, I thought you were believing me, but I'm sensing some skepticism. Let's find that if I'm right. I said it's 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. The four of clubs is 20 cards from the top. You're going to have to take my word on this stuff. Uh, we're going to slow the show down if I've got to stop and prove everything, right? <laughs> now, let's, uh, let's try this. Uh, right now, the four of clubs is here in between the ace and the two, Okay. Yeah. So why don't I show you something that really is difficult? Not only will I track the card, but I'll tell you the two cards that it's in between. All right, much more difficult. And the secret is the sound of the shuffle. Listen, just the sound. Listen. Oh, clearly, thirteenth in the face, in between the Ace of Spades and the Queen of Clubs. Oh, you don't believe me again? Oh, I'm sorry. Let, let, let me prove. Watch <laughs> I said thirteenth in the face. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13th in the face, and I also said it was in between the Ace of Spades and the Queen of Clubs. So as I spread like this, you can see that that is indeed the Four of Clubs, indeed in between the Ace of Spades and the Queen of 
clubs, all right? So just, just basic math, really. Now, at this point, you're saying to yourself, okay, well, so what? I mean, he's the best in the world, but, but so what? How does knowing that the four of clubs is 13th in the face going to help you in a card game? And it's not, unless you know how to steer cards. And steering cards means once I know the position of the card, I can reposition it to a much more accessible position. And to shuffle the cards two times and move the four of clubs from the 13th from the face to the top, that actually is a pretty difficult. But it's not going to knock off any pots. That's why I also took time to track and steer the four of diamonds, the four of hearts. Oh, my God. Face. Just, I, and you named any card. I mean, that's the part that makes it amazing. So that's uh, just some basic shuffle tracking that, uh, that you can do. Just basic shuffle tracking. I don't feel well. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's crazy, isn't it? I feel oh like uh, Christopher Walken. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> uh, now, this isn't really a trick, but you had mentioned something about uh, estimation with cards. Uh, yeah, that is so, one of the most impressive things that I, I don't know what it is yeah, about like, just, just being comes, able to sh and just know what's in your hand. Yeah, that just comes with, with practice. Uh, so there was a, like a two week period where I just sat down for nothing for two weeks. Nothing for two weeks, just did, just did this. So name what a year? Number, uh, this would have been 2005, 2007, somewhere in that next Okay. Uh, so name a number between 1 and 52. 13. All right, so quarter of the deck, that's going to be easy. That's far too much. One, this is 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 cards. Now, one time might be lucky, so let's do it again. Um, 37. 37. That's going to be deeper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven. <laughs> Does he need a moment? What? What did you think I was faking this stuff, bro? I don't like how you picked it up and you you like kind of squeezed it. I didn't like that. But then we will do it <laughs> without the squeeze. No <laughs> squeezing. Uh, pick a number. What would you like? Twenty four. Yeah, 20. Your job's easy. All you got to do is pick a number. <laughs> uh, no squeezing this time. That's a little light. 24. It's also weight. In addition to how he the heavy the thing feels, it's the feeling, the thickness of the side. So, to, yeah, what is yeah. this? Three, 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 24. <laughs> Jesus. So here's a good analogy. Tiger Woods. Remember Tiger Woods in 2007? I mean, it didn't matter where he was on the green. He, they were saying he's willing the ball into the cup. Yeah. So it's just the ability. And you watched that. Remember? Were you? Did you watch those? I they were don't watch much golf, but. Yeah, they yeah. were. Un yeah, but he was coming out in left field and doing things that have never been seen before. You know, they're saying things like he's got 181 yards to the green and he's got a pitching wedge. And the, the, the people, the uh, commentary, you know, they were saying, like, this is not possible. And then he lands it like, you know, a foot from the cup, you know. So um, yeah. he was a huge inspiration uh, for me, actually, uh, doing wow. this stuff. And you know what? As a matter of fact, uh, do you want to finish up with uh, with one more? Yes, I could do this all day, man. Well, I'll leave it up to you. Which one you want to see? We can play a, a quick game heads up poker if you want. Uh, or we can talk about a particular trick that I do live where I really talk about the uh, problem with video editing that I have. A lot of people believe that these things um, are edited. So I'll leave it up to you. Which one would you like to see? The one where I disprove editing or a quick heads up game, which could be very fun uh, between you and I. I like the interactive nature of the heads up game. Let me, let me, let's do the heads up game. All right, let's do that. And, um, now that you admitted that you want to play a quick game, 
uh, how much money are you willing to? No, no, no. <laughs> See, that's where I don't want to. <laughs> well, I mean, you said the game ones, but we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to go with with some money on the line. Otherwise, it's not fun for either of us. You, you could win a lot of money here. So let's I do have it. a sense that I won't. Uh, let's go. Let's no, go. No, you're bucks. gonna get how much? That's my buy-in usually for my poker games with the boys. It's right. fifty bucks. I'll send you my Venmo after this. Now uh, <laughs> we will give the cards a, a quick mix. That's important before any card game uh, to mix them up. Yeah. And uh, as a matter of fact, we're gonna need ten cards for this. And. I want you to determine where in the deck that we deal from, because after the cards are shuffled, they always have to be cut. So if you were here, you could cut. But like, if you cut here, the first card we deal would be a jack. If you cut in a different place, the first card would be a three. I don't know where you're going to cut. So you tell me, where do you want to cut? Uh, yeah, maybe like deep. three quarters down the way. Yeah, deep. Three quarters. So, so deeper? Deep. Yeah? Yeah, pretty deep. Yeah, deep. And then as a matter of fact, let's just finish it off with one more cut because you may think I can beat a cut, but a three-way cut, very difficult. So you, how many of these cards? So half of these or one card or, or, you know, you tell me, where do you want me to cut? Do like, yeah, four cards. Since you've just a little, just that. a little group of cards like that? All right, yeah. So you exactly. good here? Yeah. Did you want to cut one more time to throw me a curveball or leave it the way it is? Let's keep it. I like it how it is. Okay. Now, we're going to deal, like, ten cards onto the table like this. Have you ever played Mexican poker before at all? No. All right. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We just deal cards on the table uh, like this, and then we split them up between the two of us. But you can't cheat at Mexican poker. This is why it's okay to bet money. You can't cheat at a game like this, because I can't secretly add an extra card in. Why? Because once we split the cards up, five and five, there's going to be an extra card on the table. See what I mean? You can't, right. you can't cheat. Uh, so if I were to steal uh, a card out like this, I now when we split them up, one of us is going to be missing a card. So you can see already that it's not a game that you're going to want to or be able to cheat at. Uh, let's use uh, 10 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Obviously, with them face down, we won't know where the good cards are. But it's up to you. In a moment, we're going to split these up, and you get to have whatever cards you want. And I'm literally left with the cards that you don't want. So I'm kind of kind of playing your discards, really. It's not really fair to me, but... Uh, let's get a card, a poker chip, just so um, we know whose hand is whose. This will be your hand. I'll put the cards under uh, your hand. So we'll mix them up, and I'll allow you to pick whatever uh, cards you want. It's up to you. So we'll mix them up, and then which one do you want? My right or my left? Which one would you like? Your left. This one over here. That That's the one you meant? Yeah. Yep. So you're saying to me that you, you don't want this card. That's clearly... Is that right? Correct. Okay, all right, just making sure. All right, we'll shuffle these up, and uh, we'll play again. Uh, good mix, and uh, you tell me, which one do you want? My right or my left? Your left. left. So that left again, okay. All right, that's, that's not all uncommon. People tend to go to the same way, but realize you do get to pick either side. It's, it's really up to you every time. Uh, we'll mix these up, and as a matter of fact, um, you tell me, my right or my left? You're right. This one over here. Switch it up. Yeah, yeah, right. Now, do you want to throw me a curveball at the last second and just say, you know what? I know I took this, but at the last second, I want to. I kind of want to mess with you and switch them around. What's, what, what do you want? Commit or change your mind? Let's do the switch. Yeah, let's do this. Oh, you are? Switch. Man, you're so easy to manipulate. Okay. So <laughs> this one, that's, you change your mind at the last second. So you're saying yeah. that you could have had this one, but you turned it down. Yes. That's what you're saying, right? Correct. Okay. All right. uh, let's mix these up. As a matter of fact, for the last one here, I shouldn't give you this choice, but I really should just offer you these two cards. Like, do you want my right or my left? But I'll give you a new choice. Do you want to just take them both? Because then, then you've had all five cards. But I'm leaving it up to you. Right, left, or just finish the cane now and go with both cards. What do you want to do? For 50 bucks, I mean. Yeah. Pressure's up. Give me both. Oh, you, so you're really just going to end the game right here. Okay. All right. So I, I don't have access to either. But, all right. Okay, fine. Uh, let's see. You're going to find out what you got? I'm ready. Uh, well, you know, in, uh, in Cambodia, this is a really strong hand, but we're, we're not. <laughs> yeah, this is not. This is garbage. Uh, this is uh, really bad. Queen but, high? Yeah, yeah queen high. Uh, you, I mean, I gave you every poker player's dream to pick any card you want. And you got a queen high. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
So, but actually, to be honest, heads up though, heads up, Queen High can be pretty good heads up, believe it or not. Uh, and then you didn't want these. Let's find out what I have. Uh, well, I have a, I got you beat, two pair, honestly. Uh, I got a pair of aces and another pair of aces. So, <laughs> um, I mean, fuck, dude? Two pair, it will, will, will beat that queen. Uh, so, well, anyway, I mean, don't feel bad. You came in second place. There's nothing wrong with silver. You know, that's second place is great. Okay, well, you're not invited to my poker game, <laughs> but I did have a really good time getting to know you, Jason. Seriously, man, I've watched hours of your stuff, and uh, I went to buy your book, but it's not available on Kindle. I imagine that's because of the pictures, uh, yeah, the visuals. So a good analogy for my book is like a cookbook. You don't read it from cover to front, back, front to back. It's it's uh, gotcha. you jump around and learn different methods and, and things like that. So uh, they were it. never released on Kindle. There's no plan to. Uh, there's two books. One of them is out of print right now, but it'll be back in print. And um, they're available on my site as well. So where else can people find you besides the books that you offer? You're obviously very entertaining TikTok and other social media pages. But like if I wanted to see you live, could I or what else do you got going on? Yeah, of course I do. Last year we, we did public shows for about four months in Chicago. We had two months there and then we did two months in L.A. And we we're selling everything out. And just the, well, I've posted clips of those shows. Uh, that That's one of those rebuttals, by the way, because uh, you never do this live. And then the next yeah, video, yeah, yeah. you're doing it live. Right. So um, those... Um, shows i just put together when i'm in between my regular clients so during the summer uh typically i'll go out and tour so the handle is card magic by jason i'm on tiktok uh instagram and and youtube under that handle so easy to find there you can pick whatever platform you like tiktok for some reason it's much i i just blew up there yeah. more than the other platforms for some reason so um the shows though if you want to know where those uh, public shows are uh, in my captions and stories and things like that, or even in the video, the cap, the captions or my narration of the video, I, I'll drop dates and things like that. Uh, my email list isn't spam stuff. It's just for shows. It's you, you don't get a lot of spam emails and everything. It's just updates on where I might be performing and where you can buy tickets and things like that. So you can go to cardmagicbyjason.com and check out those, uh, email lists and subscriptions and things like that. Um, and then of course you can always hire me. Uh, a lot of people that have been in the comments have just said, this is amazing. Can you do a show that, you know, we're having a party. Can you come do it? And yeah. I'll go do their event. Yeah, I do that stuff all the time. I was just in Chicago for something like that. This guy was having an amazing dinner on a, on a cruise ship and they invited me out and I performed for their whole their whole group. I will try to, try to convince my boss to bring you out to our next uh, whatever holiday party. Make big, it happen. Uh, company yeah. gathering we'll get a nice friends and family hopefully but uh yeah there's two different kinds of shows that i do strolling magic walk around that means there's two three hundred people in the room i did the issa uh convention a couple of years ago and it was about a hundred thousand people there over the course of three wow. days it was yeah it was crazy so i just walk around and go up to people and perform this stuff that you're seeing right in front of you you know and then like in your hands you're holding the cards yeah, yeah 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 yeah. and then the other type of show is where i'm on stage performing to a group of 80 people 100 people whatever like that and yeah. we have a big screen behind us and we project onto that but there's people i build my show specifically to have people right in front of me so yes. there's people right on the sides that i can reach out and they take cards and everything and the whole premise of the show is watch as close as you can, you know, but you're still not going to see it. Yeah, they say don't play cards with strangers. This is why. Thank you, Jason, very much for coming on, man. I appreciate it.